right, so today I want to graph um, linear and absolute inequalities. Now, the nice thing is, is we spent most of chapter two graphing linear equalities and absolute value equalities. So those steps, those pro processes, if you will, those processes, those are all the same, okay? There's just a couple of extra kickers that we have going on today and when we do these inequality things. And we'll get to those momentarily, okay? So graphing a linear inequality. So that's graphing a line, okay? So there's two steps to graphing a line. One of the steps has a kicker to it, okay? So the first step is we are going to get ready to graph the line. So that means that we are going to put things into y equals mx plus b form. Or we are going to make a t-chart. Or we are going to do it using the intercept. We're going to find the intercept. Whichever of those three methods that you've been doing to graph lines up to and including this moment, keep doing, okay? Do those. Me, I think it's easiest to solve for y, because then that gives me the, the y-intercept, and it gives me the slope, and I can plot a bunch of points, and I'm good to go. Okay? So that's just me. That's the way I'm going with it. But if you need to do it your way, you do it your way. Okay? Now, here's the kicker. Before I draw the line on my graph, I first have to look at the inequality, and depending upon what that inequality is, that's going to give me the form of my line. So my line is going to either be solid, if it is a less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, oops, that's a bad, that looks like a 7. That's going to give me a solid line. So I'm going to draw that line in solidly, like normal. Okay? If it's less than or greater than, then I'm going to dash the line. And your line has to be dashed. By that, I mean you are going to draw a solid line here, and you are going to draw a dashed line there. Okay. If you draw a dashed line and it's not an equals type case, you are wrong. Okay. You are wrong. And as some people in the room say, since my standards are so high that I mean that I would take off for that. But you're wrong. So I'm going to take off for that. Okay? Okay? Questions on that? Okay, so that's getting the line onto our graph. Okay, once the line is on our graph, then we have to figure out where the solutions are. Now, some people say that depending upon the inequality, you're going to go above the line or below the line depending on if it's the third month of the eighth year of the, you know, the year of the mouse, and then it's the second, you know, whatever. I do test points, because test points to me are easier than, you know, trying to remember all of those conditions that go along with that, okay? You are going to shade the appropriate side of the line, because that's going to be all of the points that make this inequality be true, okay? And we're going to do that using something called test points. Now, the very, the one condition that I, or that is out there with test points is that the test point, or the TP, if you will, cannot be on the line. Or later on, when we get to absolute values, 
the test point cannot be on the absolute value. Okay? It has to be somewhere in space off of it. Okay? Now, there are going to be some easier test points, and there are going to be some not so easier test points. Okay? The easiest test point that I can think of is the roundest test point of all. Okay? Zero comma zero. The origin. If your line or your absolute value doesn't go through the origin, that should be your test point because it's the easiest one to plug back into your original inequality and figure out if it's its true beamness. Okay? Okay? So let's do some work here just on the test point aspect of this. Okay? So we don't have to solve these for y. We're just testing these points to see if they are solutions to the inequality. So what I mean by that is, and I'll test the origin here first. So I'm going to test the origin. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y back up here into my original inequality. So that's going to be then 0 is less than or equal to 2 times, and I have to plug in 0 for x, and then plus 4. So I've plugged my test point into my inequality. Now I have to do my inequality. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. So I have an inequality here of 0 is less than or equal to 4. Is that true or is that false? True or false? That's true. Okay. So that means that 0, 0 is a solution to the inequality. Okay. What I'd like you to do now is I, I'd like you to test negative 2, comma, 10. So by plugging in negative 2, comma, 10, that's going to give me 10 <coughs> is less than or equal to 2 times negative 2, then plus 4. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So I get 10 is less than or equal to 0. And that is a false statement. So negative 2 comma 10 is not a solution. True is good, false is bad. Okay. True means it works, false means it doesn't. Okay. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to test both points in number two. All right, so if I plug in the origin, zero comma zero, I get two times zero. minus 0 is less than 3. So that's 0 minus 0 is 0 is less than 3. That is true. So the origin here is a solution. Then if I try negative 2 comma positive 2, I get 2 times negative 2 minus 2 is less than 3. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6 
is less than 3. That is also a true statement. So this point is also a solution. Negative 2 comma 2 is a solution. And when it gets to graphs, you can pick any point as long as it's not on the line. Okay? So if you want to choose the origin, great. If you don't want to choose the origin, I'm not stopping you. You just have more math to do. Okay? All right? So let's try one. Okay? So I want to graph this line. So the first thing is, is I am thinking here about this as an equal sign. I'm thinking about y equals mx plus b. Okay? That's what I'm thinking about right now. If we need to split up because we're being a distraction, then we should probably split up because we're being a distraction. Okay? All right? So, if I'm thinking about this as y equals mx plus b, what is my b? So what does that mean? A b of negative 3, what does that mean I do? Down 3 from the origin, right? Now, some people on yesterday's formative, one, 18 of you didn't take it. Okay? Some people were gone, but a lot of you were here and didn't take it. Not happy. But some people on yesterday's formative went left 3. Is that a y-intercept in this case? They went, instead of going down 3, they went over here, and that was their y-intercept. Is that a y-intercept? No, that's an x-intercept. Okay? So I go down 3. Boom, there's my point. Okay? What's my slope? Negative 1 half, so that tells me I do what, what two directions? And what distances? Down one and right two. Rinse, lather, and repeat. What if I don't want, like to go down and to the right? Up and left. Okay. Now I am not going to draw in my line just yet. I first have to determine if my line is going to be solid or dashed, which one is it going to be? Solid, because I'm looking here at the equals component. Okay, I look at that inequality. That gives me a solid line, so I'm going to draw in a solid line. Then, I need to pick a test point. Which test point do I want to use? I go with the origin. For me, and this is just because this is what I do, I also put a little T on my graph. Okay? Because that signifies where my test point point is. Okay? Now, when I plug this test point back in, if I get a true statement, I'm going to shade on that side of the line, the test point side of the line. If I get a false statement, I'm going to shade on the other side of the line. But I have to shade because it's not an equal sign. If it's an equal sign, it's just the line. If it's an inequality, there's shading involved. Okay. So, I've got 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1 half times 0, then minus 3. Negative 1 half times 0 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3, so I get 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Is that a true or a false statement? 
True or false? That's a true statement. Okay? So because it's a true statement, I shade on the test point side of the line. So I'm going to shade this entire side. Another reason why we go all the way across our graph with our lines. Okay? Questions? Do those two. Greater than or equal to two thirds x minus four. I get there, okay? Because the sign's got to flip because we're dividing by a negative. Okay? So minus four, one, two, three, and four puts me there. Slope of two thirds there, there, there. Scroll down just a little bit here, and I can go. Two, three, two, three, two, one, two, and three. There we go. Okay. This one is a solid line. I did not go through the origin, so I'm going to test point the origin. So that's going to give me 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0 is less than or equal to 12. So 0 is less than or equal to 12, which is true. So I am going to shade on that side. Because that was my test point. Because if I shaded over it, then it would you would see where my test point was. But you can do that on yours. Yes. Yeah. By all means. Y greater than negative three x minus four. One two three and four. Two three one 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 two three one one two one two three one one two three one. One, one, two, three, one, and so on and so forth. So this one is not a solid line. This is a dashed line. Okay. Again, I did not go through the origin. Three times zero plus zero is greater than negative four. Zero is greater than negative four. That is a true statement. So I would shade then on
Questions on those? Absolute value inequalities, done exactly the same way. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to graph the absolute value. So if you are a t-chart method, finder of the v type method, okay, you do that. If you are a find the vertex because it's in standard form, then you do that. And then the left side slope is opposite of a, right side slope is positive a. Okay, so we get that. Again, we have solid and dashed lines based upon our inequality. Again, we have test points. Okay? Except now we are going to shade inside the V or outside the V, depending on the truthiness of our test point. Okay? So you can pick any point again for a test point. Again, it just can't be on the V. Okay? But you're just going with the truthiness. Now, if it's true, you shade on wherever that test point is, just like with lines. So if it's inside and it's true, you shade inside. If it's outside and it's true, you shade outside. If it's inside and it's false, you shade outside. If it's outside and it's false, you shade inside. Okay? Let's dive right into these. Okay? So, here's my graph. I want to graph y is greater than absolute value of x minus 1, then plus 4. So where is my vertex? Positive 1, comma 4. What is the slope of my right side ray? Positive 1. What is the slope of my left side ray? Negative 1. Solid or dashed V? The dashed V. Did I go through the origin? No, so let's use the test point of the origin. So that's going to be 0 is greater than the absolute value of 0 minus 1, then plus 4. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1, 1 plus 4, 5. So I have 0 is greater than 5. Is that true or is that false? That's false. So my test point was outside and it was false. So where do I shade? Test point was outside and it was false. So I shade inside. If it was true, Colin, then I would have shaded outside where my test point was. No, if it's true, you shade where the test point is. Just like on back when we were doing lines. Here, my test point was on this side, and it was true, so I shade where that test point is. Okay? Here... 
my test point was false, so I shade where the test point isn't. Okay? Try that one. So I got a vertex here at positive 3, comma, positive 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. I got a right side slope of negative 2 and a left side slope of positive 2. So there and there, there and there, 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 and there. A solid or dashed line on this one? It is solid, yes. Oops, that's dashed. Why did it go dashed? Why did it go dashed? We'll fix that here. Whoa, now, whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh. Okay. Did I go through the origin? No, so I'm going to use that as my test point. So that's going to be 0 less than or equal to negative 2 times the absolute value of 0 minus 3, then plus 2. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Absolute value is positive 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Is that a true or a false statement? That's a false statement. So my test point was outside, which means then I shade inside. <coughs> to the point. If it's false, you shade away from the point. Okay. We'll do this one together because we're running low on the time. You're welcome. You don't have to call me God, though. Vertex. Negative 4, comma, 0. Right side slope. One half. Left side slope. Negative one half. So that's here and here and here and here and here and here and here. And that's here and here and here. Solid or dashed V? This one's a dashed V. Did I go through the origin? No. So that's going to be 0 is less than 1 half times the absolute value of 0 plus 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. The absolute value of 4 is 4 times 1 half is 2. So 0 is less than 2. Is that true or is that false? That's a true statement. And since my test point was on the outside, I shade outside. Yeah, buddy? 
My only other choice, Colin, was this one. And I don't like that one. Freaks me out. No, it's like funkiness. Kim? Hey. Exactly. So I'm giving you two homeworks this evening. I'm giving you the 2.8 homework. And I'm giving you the chapter review homework for Friday's test. Okay? So both of those homeworks will be due on Friday.